So in the last session, we ended up creating this program, which is a very simplistic program, having few activities, milestones, and created the links between these activities with the WBS, as we can see. So now it's time to head to the XCR file that we've exported. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to open it in a notepad, which is uh, any notepad will do. So just close all the other stuff that I have in here. Okay, here we go. So this is the XCR file. And if you remember in the last session, I've exported that in version 8.2. And that's exactly what it says here. Um, the way that the uh, that the file is structured is very simple. So we have percent uh, percent sign and then T, which means that this is a table. So that will be the table name. So in this case, it's curve type, which is currency type, and then percent sign F, which is field, which means the table the table uh, uh, columns or headings. The, the column headings, yeah. And then we have the R or the records, like the values for each of the columns. Okay. So, uh, just to show that, um, I'll just open an Excel file, an empty Excel file. Start the blank Excel, and then I will come here and then copy this currency table. Then go back to Excel and then paste everything in here. So you can see the currency table. Okay, this is like the fields and rows. So basically what we have is a table and this table have currency ID. And um, here we have digit, digit, decimal digit count. So it's like two decimal digits will be and then currency symbol uh, decimal symbol and then grouping it's like uh, the thousand grouping that you put um, a comma in there and yeah I mean we'll, we'll talk about the details but here it shows like British pounds uh, Argentini peso and whatever the, all the currencies that I have in, in, in my P6 database so that is how the structure works and this structure, okay, let's keep this open, so maybe you can use it later on. But this structure works for everything. So you need to understand when you have a table, skirt table, and then we have uh, other OBS, like the, uh, the organization breakdown structure, a project, so that is the project that we have. And if you recall, we call this project like pi p6 um XCR and that's where the project short name and then which is the project code or the project ID and then we have the other um, uh, full description of the project should be somewhere I mean like it's 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 quite big here to look at that it would be there then here we have the calendars so we have a calendar ID we've used only one calendar which is a standard five day work week and this is the default calendar that I have and we'll talk about calendars in a lot more details because it has a, a specific way of um, being mentioned. But the next table is schedule or yeah, sched options. And this where you get like when the program was lost, recalculated, what is the data date and all the other information in there. Uh, then we have the project WBS. So th that will be a good one to have a look at it in Excel. So let's copy the WBS. Go to Excel, new sheet, and here we here we go. So basically, these are the WBS names. So you can see we have test project, mobilization, design, construction, handover. But it's not only that we have here an ID, and we have here WBS parent ID. So basically say that the, the, the first one it's not in the list so that will be the project reference but the second one here it is referring to 3770 which is that uh, record so this will be 
Mobilization is under test project. Design is under test project. Construction, same. And handover is the same. So they are all referring to this particular. And that's how the hierarchy is created in, in P6. Um, then if we moved on to task, which are the activities, it is the same thing uh, we have there. Uh, it instead of having a parent because it doesn't have a parent you will have a different concept here and this different concept is you have the task id which is different than the activity id so the activity id is called um, task code so that will be I mean we can search for it um, yeah task code in here so the task code are the activities uh, activity IDs that we have in the program and the task name are the descriptions or the names of the activities as we mentioned them in, 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 in the program. However, there is the links to the WBS is in that WBS ID. So for example, mobilization is under 3771 WBS. So let's call this WBS. And here mobilization will be 3771 and this one will be the mobilization um, let's say start project and the WBS ID 3771 which is the same under mobilization if we went to the program start project milestone is there um, also in that um, spreadsheet we have um, not only the, uh, the this information but it's it's more information in the task in the tasks um, so let's call this stuff activities so we don't get confused and in the activities here we have task type and there are different types so TT task which means like it's an dependent task or yeah and then TT mile is a start milestone, TT fin mile is finish milestone. But how do you understand this way of, or how do you understand or you map them out to what you understand in P6? Because also you can see here percent complete CP DRTN, which is duration. Uh, I mean, when, when you get used to it, you, you won't have to look them up. However, there is a guide uh, which I'm going to share the link with you for that guide, and basically. If I want to understand what is, um, well, um, yeah, TT mile, because it can be start or finish milestone, I, I happen to know that it is the start, because the one be below it is, uh, uh, the one below here is finish milestone, so that must be start. Uh, so if I can come to this document and just paste what I'm looking for and that will search yeah, my computer is running slow a little bit but that will search and it will get, give me out the details so yeah so TT mile okay let's zoom in is a start milestone so these are the task types so we have TT task task dependent and then resource dependent is called TTRSCRC. Level of effort is called TTLOE, and 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 so on and so forth. But that that applies to all the variables that you don't understand what are the meaning of these variables. So that can be a, a quite handy document to refer to every time you are trying to understand a, a Primavera uh, file or XCR file. Then the last one in, in, in the current uh, file that we've created is task PRID. And task PRID is an abbreviation for task predecessors. So I will call this relations. And let's paste it in here. And here what we have is basically a reference. Task ID and then preceding task ID, which is PRID task ID, and then the project ID and the pre project ID because if you're referring to different tasks or linking tasks between different projects, which is quite common. And then you have 
the predecessor type or the relationship type and that's again if we can go uh, back to this document and search for it yeah so PRFS is finished to start PRSS start to start and so on and so forth um, it is very important to note that the lag is in hours so it's called lag HR count so if we check this activity which is um, where where is the task ID? Yeah, this task ID is three six zero four one. So three six zero four one is construction, and its predecessor is design. And we have made construction linked to design with a finish to finish two days. But in P six, the way that it is stored it's not in days it's in hours that's why you found 16 hours and this 16 hours is related to the calendar so if you check this is the calendar here uh, because that's confusing to a lot of people but the calendar will be subject for a, a further discussion because it's not uh, an easy topic to discuss really uh, but for the calendar, there is a, a, the, you'll find the default hours is 8. Um, maybe we can copy it also to a spreadsheet so we can see that easily. somewhere I need to find this I think I've copied the wrong thing here let's go back yeah I've copied the project not the calendar apologies for that so let's go back and copy the calendar here we go and you see that day hours count is 8, weekly hours count is 40, monthly hours count is 172 and 200. So if you go back to P6, to calendars, where are my calendars? Yeah, here we go. And then I modify this to look at it and it's 8 hours per day. And if we open that also to show how many hours every day is allowed and the time period is 8, 40, 172 and 2000. So we'll have a further discussion, more detailed discussion on the calendars in, in, in coming sessions. So that is the structure of IFC, uh, sorry, of XCR files and um, yeah, I think in the next session we will start coding. Alright, until next time, see you, bye.